Sutra. Beings in good and evil destinies, beings with blessed and cursed features, beings beautiful or ugly, beings defined or pure, and other such uncountable kinds of beings, that is to say, he sees divas, dragons, yakshas, gandavas, asuras, garudas, kinaras, mahoragas, humans, non-humans, those diminutive in body, those enormous in body, those small and those great. With his unobstructed vision, he clearly discerns the various kinds of sentient beings. He comprehensively and unerringly sees sentient beings according to their accumulations of karma, their experiences of suffering and happiness, their minds, their discriminations, their views, their speech, their causes, their karmic results, their conditions, and what they give rise to. This is called a Bodhisattva Masava second wisdom based spiritual power of the unobstructed heavenly eye. Commentary A Bodhisattva uses the first wisdom based spiritual power of knowing others' minds to practice the Bodhisattva path and teach sentient beings. The second is the wisdom-based spiritual power of the unobstructed pure heavenly eye to observe various causes and conditions, various retributions, various kinds of births and that are undergone. Therefore, the Sutra states that, uh, that there are sentient beings who die on this earth and then are reborn on another planet. They may be born on this earth again, perhaps in Asia, America, Africa, Australia, or Europe. Each of the five continents has its own sentient beings who die and then are born, or who are born and then die. Bodhisattvas with the wisdom-based spiritual power of the heavenly eye clearly perceive these circumstances of transmigration and retribution. Americans may be born in Asia, Asians may be born in America, Americans may be born in Australia, and Australians may be born in Africa. The dying are born in a recurrent cycle without a beginning or end. On this earth, they are born and then die, they die and then are born. Beings in good and evil destinies, there are those who are born in a good path the human realm, the heavenly realm, and the asura realm. There are those born in the three evil paths of animals, hungry ghosts, and hell beings. Asuras are classified into the category of the three good paths sometimes, and the four evil paths other times because they enjoy competition and battles. With such big tempers, they want to challenge everybody. Beings with blessed or cursed features. If you do lots of good deeds, you will have a blessed appearance. If you do all kinds of evil deeds, you will incur the appearance of a criminal. A blessed appearance is the appearance of perfect blessings and virtue. The offensive appearance is ugly. Everyone is afraid to look at you. Beings beautiful or ugly, one's appearance may be upright and proper or unattractive, beings defined or pure, perhaps they are uncount and unbearably vulgar, or perhaps they are pure and elegant, and other such uncountable kinds of beings. Sentient beings' appearances vary depending on the type of infinitely many categories to which they belong. That is to say, he sees divas. Heavenly beings have abundant blessings and dragons, who practice all kinds of Mahayana Buddha drama but don't uphold the precepts. Since they courageously and vigorously practice Mahayana Buddha drama, they have spiritual powers. Since they frequently violate the precepts, such as breaking the vow of being a vegetarian and other precepts, they turn into different animal species. They feel that precepts are not important and that bending the rules a bit is alright. It's not a big deal to them. That's why they become animals. Dragons are animals. Yakshas are a type of ghost. They are speeding ghosts who are quite swift. This type of ghost can fly in space and walk on land doing so very quickly. They're faster than rockets. 
Gandava's a music spirit for the Jade Emperor. Asura's a bold and competitive, a type of creature with hot tempers. The multitudes of Garuda's are the great pongbers. The multitudes of Kinara's are music makers for the Jade Emperor as well. The multitudes of Mahuragas are great python spirits. The multitudes, multitudes of humans are all of us people. The multitudes of non-humans are all other sentient beings and those diminutive in body such as flies, insects, ants, and microorganisms. These are all tiny creatures. Those enormous in body include the big elephant and other animals in the ocean with extremely long bodies. This is those small microscopic life forms and those great life forms. With his unobstructed vision, he clearly discerns the various kinds of sentient beings. The Bodhisattva uses his spiritual power of the heavenly eye, which is derived from wisdom, also called unobstructed vision. He sees every detail in plain view. He comprehensively and unerringly sees sentient beings according to their accumulations of karma, their experiences of suffering and happiness. He comprehensively and unerringly sees sentient beings according to their accumulations of karma, their experiences of suffering and happiness. If they plant roots of goodness, they reap the fruits of goodness. If they plant goods, uh, roots of evil, they reap for fruits of evil. Therefore, the result may or may not be happiness depending on what they create in their minds, their discriminations that they create, and their views depending on whether they construct wholesome or unwholesome views as well as their speech, what they say, their causes, and their karma. If their karmic results or intentions are kind, they reap positive results. If they are evil, they reap negative results. The Bodhisattva observes their karmic results, their conditions that they generate, and what they give rise to, such as the arising of states. The Bodhisattva uses his spiritual power of the heavenly eye derived from wisdom to clearly see us sentient beings in our every move. That's why the Vata Sutra states, all the various thoughts in which occurs to sentient beings are completely known by the Tathagata. Similar, similarly, the Buddha clearly knows and sees all sentient beings a uh, variety of bodies. Not only does the Buddha know this in detail, the Bodhisattvas under discussion who have accumulated all kinds of gurus, these Bodhisattvas of equal enlightenment who have perfected the six paramitas and the myriad practices can see every detail comprehensively. Their vision is flawless and infallible. This is called a Bodhisattva Mahasattva's second wisdom-based spiritual power of the unobstructed heavenly eye. The great Bodhisattva among the Bodhisattvas has this kind of ability and power to observe all sentient beings with their various forms, various karma and various retributions in clear precision. Sutra Disciples of the Buddha with the wisdom-based spiritual power of knowing past lives whenever one wishes. A Bodhisattva Mahasattva knows past lives of his own and all sentient beings in worlds as many as does most in ineffably ineffable Buddha lands throughout past eras as many as does most in ineffably ineffable Buddha lands. A Bodhisattva Mahasattva knows everything such as their places of birth, their first names and surnames, their ethnicity, their diet, their pain and pleasure, the causes and conditions under which they have been involving and transmigrating endlessly in the realms of existence. For life after life since time immemorial. He also knows all matters such as sentient beings, various types and ranks, nationalities, destinies in rebirth, appearances, comic deeds, bondage, thoughts, causes, and conditions that lead to their different lives. 
He also recalls that there are as many Buddha as dust moles in all Buddha lands, in worlds as many as dust moles in all Buddha lands, throughout ends as many as dust moles in all Buddha lands. The Bodhisattva Mahasattva recalls the name of each Buddha, how that Buddha came into the world, his assemblies, his parents, his attendants, his hearers, his two best disciples, his cities and counties, his living home, his attainment of utmost proper enlightenment under the Bodhi tree, the places and thrones where he proclaimed so many sutras, how he benefited sentient beings, his lifespan at that time, his performance of Buddha deeds, his entry into Parinirvana through reliance on the non-residual Parinirvana and how long his drama remained after his entry into Parinirvana. The Bodhisattva can recall um, all of this. Commentary Universal Worthy Bodhisattva again called All of you disciples of the Buddha with a state of wisdom based spiritual power of knowing past lives whenever one wishes, he reads others' minds, sees with his heavenly eye, and knows others' past lives without exerting any conscious effort. Ahas, on the other hand, must exert a conscious effort to contemplate, but boldly, but boastfully before they can know. The states that we are talking about are those of bodhisattvas. A bodhisattva does not have to intentionally contemplate or observe in particular. They can't tell, you can't tell from bodhisattva's actions or behavior that they're contemplating and in what regard. However, they naturally know whatever they need to know. They don't need to think. This is effortless spiritual wisdom. Our hearts, on the other hand, need to quiet down, focus, meditate, and then contemplate before they know all states. This Bodhisattva being discussed now has the wisdom of knowing past lives and thus can know all states. He knows his own past lives as well as those of all sentient beings in worlds as many as those most in ineffably ineffable Buddha lands. Throughout past eras, as many as those most in ineffably ineffable Buddha lands, he knows and understands everything these sentient beings have experienced in past lifetimes during compass as many as those most in ineffably ineffable Buddha lands. He knows everything, such as their places of birth. Where are these sentient beings that we are talking about born? Their first names and surnames. What are their first names? What are their surnames? Their ethnicity. What race are they? Are they white or black? Are they brown or red? What are their ethnic backgrounds? Taiwan has the High Mountain Tribe. China has the Han Chinese, Machos, Mongolians, Uyghurs, Tibetans, Yao, and many other ethnic groups. Their diet. Sentient beings are born in a particular country. Each country enjoys a particular diet, consuming different foods. Some eat bread, some eat rice, some in Africa use yams and cassavas for food. They dig the roots out of the soil and eat them cooked or raw. Different peoples have different customs and habits. Their pain and pleasure. What kind of suffering and happiness do they undergo? The causes and conditions under which they have been evolving and transmigrating endlessly in the realms of existence for life after life since time immemorial. For beginning's compass, they have been tossing and turning in the three realms and 25 levels of existence due to causes and conditions. They have been evolving little by little, life after life, for a long time now. Sentient beings have long been circling in the cycle of birth and death unceasingly for life after life, generation after generation. He also knows matters such as sentient beings, various types and ranks, nationalities, destinies in rebirth, appearances such as human beings with our looks, animals with their beast-like forms, comic deeds, all our actions, bondage of which there are various forms. For example, people are bound by the ten servants, 
which are greed, anger, delusion, arrogance, doubt, the view of a body, extreme views, views of unprincipled morality, views of grasping of views and wrong views. Also, thoughts, causes, and conditions. Sentient beings have their own karma and retribution that lead to their different lives. The Bodhisattvas obviously comprehend all of the above. He also recalls that in the past, there are as many Buddhas as does most in all Buddha lands, in the ones as many as does most in all Buddha lands, throughout the ends as many as does most in all Buddha lands. There are so many Buddhas. The Bodhisattva Masatva recalls the name of each Buddha. He also knows the designation of each Buddha, how that Buddha came into the world, how did each emerge in the world, his assemblies, what are the names of the Buddha's assemblies and Bodhimandas, which Bodhisattvas are present there, his parents, who are his mother and father, his attendants, who are the attendants, his hearers, who are the great hearers, his best, his two, his two best disciples, whether the foremost in spiritual powers of wisdom, his two top students, his cities and counties, where did he abide, his living home, even how he attained utmost proper enlightenment under the Bodhi tree, the places and thrones where he proclaimed so many sutras, on what Dharma thrones did he speak, the Dharma and the sutras that he lectured. How many sutras did he lecture? He can recollect everything such as how he benefited all sentient beings. What kind of benefits did each and every sentient beings receive? His lifespan at that time. How long was his life? His performance of Buddha deeds. How he proclaimed and te the teaching and did the Buddha's work on a vast scale. He recollects each being's entry into Parinirvana through reliance on the non-residual Parinirvana and how long his drama remained after his entry into Parinirvana. The Bodhisattva can recall all of this. Sutra. He also recalls the name of the names of Buddhas as many as does most in ineffably ineffable Buddha lands. Each name represents Buddhas as many as does most in ineffably ineffable Buddha lands. He has complete knowledge of how each of these Buddhas brings forth his initial resolve for Bodhi, made vows and practices, made offerings to all Buddhas, tame sentient beings, and speaks Dharma for his assemblies. He knows the length of each Buddha's life, his spiritual powers and transformation, and even his entry into non-residual Paranivana, the length of time his Dharma remains after he enters Paranivana, and the stupas and monasteries that are constructed with various adornments, causing sentient beings to plant and nurture good roots. The Bodhisattva can know all of this, this is called a Bodhisattva Mahasattva's third wisdom-based spiritual power of knowing past lives extending back through ends of time. Commentary He also recalls the names of Buddhas as many as those most in ineffable the ineffable Buddha lands. Each name represents Buddhas as many as those most in ineffably ineffable Buddha lands. He has complete knowledge of how each of these Buddhas brings forth his initial resolve for Bodhi, makes vows and practices, makes offerings to all Buddhas, tames sentient beings, and speaks drama for all his assemblies. He knows the length of each Buddha's life his spiritual powers of transformation, and even his entry into non-residual paranirvana. Based on non-residual nirvana, everything is accomplished. All the happies and falls, the five dull servants and the five sharp servants of greed, anger, delusion, arrogance, doubt, the view of a body, extreme views, views of unprincipled morality, views of grasping at views, and wrong views have vanished. Due to this, they enter the, the realm of Paranirvana. Paranirvana is the principle and substance of non-arising and non-cessation. 
He recalls for each Buddha the length of time his Dharma remains after he enters Paranirvana, and after entering Nirvana, how long his Dharma remained after his entry into Paranirvana. How long did the proper Dharma remain in the world? How long did the Dharma image age last in the world? How long did the Dharma ending age last? He recalls for each Buddha the stupas and monasteries that are constructed with various adornments such as the seven jewels, causing sentient beings to plant and nurture various good roots. We are providing opportunities for sentient beings to plant good roots when we build stupas and temples and to plant those good roots deeply. The Bodhisattva can know all of this. This is called a Bodhisattva Masattva's third wisdom based spiritual power of knowing past lives, extending back through ends of time. This is a great Bodhisattva among Bodhisattvas. The third spiritual power is the knowledge of lives in all past ends. Sutra Disciples of the Buddha with the wisdom based spiritual power of knowing future ends of time. A Bodhisattva Mahasattva knows all ends in worlds as many as the most in ineffably ineffable Buddha lands. In each end, the Bodhisattva knows everything about how sentient beings continually die and are reborn within the levels of existence, whether the karmic actions and retributions are wholesome or unwholesome, transcendental or mundane, decisive or indecisive. He knows whether sentient beings are have wrong or correct concentration, whether or not their gurus are accompanied by defilements, whether or not they are endowed with gurus, whether or not they can be gathered in by their gurus, whether or not they have accumulated gurus, and whether or not they have accumulated offenses. He knows all such things throughout the world, as many as does most in ineffably ineffable Buddha lands. Throughout future ends, as many as those most in ineffably ineffable Buddha lands. Commentary Disciples of the Buddha, all Jew disciples of the Buddha, with the wisdom based spiritual power of knowing future ends of time. The Bodhisattva Mahasattva knows all ends in worlds as many as those most in ineffably ineffable Buddha lands. The great Bodhisattva among Bodhisattvas has the wisdom based spiritual power of knowing everything that occurs within all future compass. They know compass in worlds as many as the most in ineffably ineffable Buddha lands. In each end, the Bodhisattva knows everything about how sentient beings continually die and are reborn within the levels of existence. In each kampa, sentient beings die, then are reborn continuously. They continually transmigrate within the three realms of desire, form, and formlessness, which are also divided into the 25 levels of existence. The Bodhisattva knows whether the karmic actions and retributions are wholesome or unwholesome, transcendental or mundane, decisive or indecisive. Sentient beings' ability to, to transcend the three realms may be decisive or indecisive. Their liberation from birth and death may be decisive or they may still indecisively linger in birth and death. He knows whether sentient beings have deviant or proper concentration. They may enter deviant concentration or proper concentration. Deviant concentration is based on wrong knowledge and views. Proper concentration based on proper knowledge and views. He also knows whether or not their gurus are accompanied by defilements. Whether the gurus have assembled together with the five dumb defilements and the five sharp defilements. The five dumb defilements are greed, aversion, delusion, pride, and doubt. The five sharp defilements are the view of a self, extreme view, view of rigid morality, views of attachment to views, and wrong view. The Bodhisattva knows whether or not they are endowed with gurus and have perfected gurus. He knows whether or not they can be gathered in by their gurus. Perhaps the Bodhisattva uses the practice of gathering in to attract all sentient beings who have good rules and with whom he has affinities. Perhaps Bodhisattvas don't gather in those beings who are not yet ready. 
if they are not mature enough yet, they can't be gathered in by the Bodhisattvas. He knows whether or not they have accumulated good rules. Beings may already have accumulated plenty of good rules or none at all. The Bodhisattva knows whether or not they have accumulated offenses. Perhaps they have not amassed rules of goodness but have collected many offenses. Of course, there are those who have not amassed too many offenses too. He knows all such things throughout once, as many as does the most in ineffable, the ineffable Buddha lands. Throughout the future ends, as many as does most in ineffable, the ineffable Buddha lands. He knows everything like this that will happen everywhere in the future. He can recognize, categorize, and distinguish all this down to the smallest detail.